Project Diary, I will teach you how to grow tomatoes from seed. Hi and welcome to Project Diaries. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to grow tomatoes. Now these are one of the easiest things you can grow and they're extremely popular for beginners. Uh, so basically, um, if you have seen or haven't seen my uh, how to harvest the seeds video, uh, the link's going to be right here. Uh, so I, I suggest you go and see that first and then come back. Um, and the other thing is, is there's two different uh, types of tomato. Uh, you can get uh, indeterminate and determinate. Uh, and basically this means, um, indeterminate means they're going to completely uh, keep growing fruit throughout the year until the, uh, the final frost comes and kills them off. Or determinate is basically they store up all of their energy and they're basically determined to produce the best and one big um, harvest. Uh, personally, I like to get ind uh, indeterminate uh, varieties, but as I grow these from uh, food waste from supermarkets, it's virtually impossible for me to find out what variety I'm harvesting the seeds from. So it's just a bit of a potluck. Um, so basically, I'm going to show you how to grow them today, and uh, as usual, I'll leave some affiliated links um, so you can buy some of the seeds online. Uh, now these are just Amazon links, they're nothing to do with me at all, so I don't sell anything. But um, that's just some suggestions before you start growing. Anyway, straight into it and here's how to grow tomatoes. So here's a close up of the seeds I harvested a few days ago. Now it doesn't matter whether you're growing cherry tomatoes, beef tomatoes or regular tomatoes. They all grow exactly the same at the beginning, it just depends which variety you bought. If you get a determinate variety, they're usually a bush plant and they usually grow up to about 4 foot maximum. The other indeterminate varieties are usually the vine tomatoes and they can grow between 6 and 10 feet. So right now I'm just using a multi-purpose compost to grow these in and I've made a small hole with my finger about half an inch deep. Now I am just putting one seed in each section for this one but later on you will see me put two seeds in and I'll show you how to separate them. I'm also using a different propagator than I usually use but I will show you some beef tomatoes that I'm growing in the regular way which is the old faithful chocolate eclair box that I get from Grandad. Now if you want to get ahead of the game you can start these indoors between 6 and 8 weeks before your last frost date. Now once you've sown the seeds in the holes you just need to push the compost over it and pat them down gently. Now you don't want to be too hard or too light on these. Uh, it's basically so the seedling can push through and gain a little bit of strength but if it's got too much resistance they won't grow. You also want to fill any gaps under the soil and push out any air pockets. This will also help for the roots to grow a lot stronger. Once that's done all you need to do is water them in. Now if you're interested in finding out how to make your own water bottle and 5 other tools for the garden, check out this video on 6 life hacks on how to reuse and recycle plastic milk bottles. One last thing and I know before you make any comments I have spelt it wrong, but it's good to label up your plants. Then just put the propagator lid back on and put this somewhere warm. And I'll bet you'll be surprised at how quick these grow. Within as little as 5 days you should be able to see the seedlings pushing through the soil. Here they are just the first week in, and here are my beef tomatoes just two weeks in. These are also the regular tomatoes in two weeks. So here they are just over three weeks. Now starting any seedling indoors could cause them to go leggy, so here's my tutorial video on how to stop that. Now these really have been doing well indoors, but I will pot them on in the shed just so they get used to the colder conditions. So as I said earlier, I've sown two seeds in each pod for this variety. I'm just going to show you how to separate them now. Just simply using a teaspoon to help pop these out, give them a little squeeze at the bottom and they should come out really easy. I'm not sure if you can see from this camera angle, but all the seedlings are different heights and sizes. The speed of the growing process really can vary from plant to plant. Just try not to touch or squeeze the stem too much. I'm just going to move the camera so it's a lot easier for you to see. So basically you just get a really sharp knife and cut down past the root system on each side. Now these are really sturdy little plants as long as you treat them with respect. So they won't mind having the root system disrupted as long as you make sure they're mature enough for you to do this. As you can see that separating these plants is fairly easy and there's a substantial amount of root system on each plant. So if you're going to copy me and use a yoghurt pot make sure you pierce some drainage holes in the bottom first. Simply just use a nail or a bradle to pierce the holes. Anything you grow really does need a good lot of drainage in order not to get root rot. 
So I'm just going to gently move these out of the way so I can show you how to pot these up. Now again, I'm just using a multi-purpose compost. I'm just making sure there's no big chunks of bark or anything in there. Just going to get that out. Uh, you don't want anything in the way of the root system. You want it nice and smooth. So I'm just going to dig a little hole. And then gently picking up the plant without squeezing the stem. Place it in the hole and push the soil around it. Now the great thing about tomato plants is they've got small little hairs across all the stems which means you can bury these as deep as you like. Burying the tomato plant past the soil line won't rot the stem like other plants. In fact it will help promote a better root system. So I'm just trying not to waste any of the soil and I'm just going to pack it down until it feels firm when it stands by itself. Once you feel confident that it is sturdy you just need to water it in. There you go, all finished. Now all you need to do is just leave this somewhere sunny and warm. Next up I'm going to show you some troubleshooting problems between a healthy plant and an unhealthy plant. So here are three examples. The first one here is really lovely and green, it's got lovely leaves and it looks really healthy. As you can see the stem looks really healthy, it's growing new shoots and it just looks like it's growing well. This one here has a really healthy top, all the leaves are green but as you come further down you can see that there's some damage here. This one was covered in aphids and it's had loads of spider mites attacking it. That's why these leaves have got little white marks all over them. Now as you can see on this one, the leaf colour are completely different from the top to the bottom and the whole plant is turning yellow and white. You can see the green veins in the leaves and all around the edges are turning yellow as well. Now again this has had a severe attack with spider mite and you can usually tell if there's a white webbing underneath the leaf. Now a lot of people will jump to the conclusion and say this is a magnesium problem but the soil is too new for that so don't waste any Epsom salts. It's basically just a case of overwatering. So once they get to about four weeks old you want to think about how and where you're going to grow them. Now uh, tomato plants are fairly easy to grow. If you are going to get the bush varieties you can uh, grow them in containers. Uh, some people have even been known to grow them in baked bean cans uh, because they are such a shorter variety. But if you're going to vine them, um, basically they don't need to be um, uh, buried too deep. Uh, the root system will, will go and sort of grow outwards rather than down depending on what circumstances they're growing in. Um, so basically this is now four weeks old so I need to plant it in my square foot garden. If you haven't seen my square foot gardening video, here's the link. Uh, and I will be doing the how to plant up a square foot gardening video soon as soon as we start getting better weather. Uh, if you're wondering what these are, these are my passion fruit. Uh, they have just started to get attacked uh, by something at the moment, I haven't quite figured it out, but the leaves are curling up, uh, but they will be um, planted into the ground soon. But anyway, straight back to the uh, tomatoes, here's how to plant them up. So the next thing you'll want to do is harden these off, and that basically means from taking them from in the shed or from indoors, and getting them used to the weather outside. Now obviously this is the UK and the weather is completely unpredictable, uh, so it is definitely uh, worth doing these uh, just to prevent any diseases or even killing them off. Uh, so basically all you need to do is just put these outside uh, a week before you're trying to plant them uh, and just put them outside for an hour on the first day and then progressively uh, leave them out for an extra hour each day until they've pretty much been outside for the whole day and then they're ready to plant on. So once they've got to about a month old it's time to plant them on outside. Uh, now it's fairly simple to do and if you're following the square foot garden rules it's one per square uh, but I'll show you how to do that now. Now no matter what variety you've got it's always good to put a stake in the ground before you plant them in order not to disrupt the root system later on. Now there are many ways you can support a tomato plant. Now I use seven different ways myself but you can use tomato cages, bamboo or some form of trellis. So transferring these out of pots you just need to put the plant between your fingers and hold it gently Give the pot a squeeze and maybe a tap on the bottom and it should come out easily. Now as you can see the root system on this is really good and it hasn't become root bound in the pot. Now the soil has fallen away from the root but you can see the dark patch here. I'm going to bury it up to about that line. Now if you're wondering what kind of compost I'm using, it's basically homegrown mixed in with lots of autumn leaves and perlite. I have done a few other tutorials on how to make the perfect soil and by using this it should mean that I don't need to fertilise this throughout the growing period. But there are a few things you can do to improve conditions. Now I'm going to show you one of my little tricks and it's using eggshells. Tomato plants are extremely heavy feeders and they really benefit having a boost of calcium through their growing period. 
Now the calcium in these eggshells aren't plant available straight away but over the next coming months when the plant needs it the eggshells will start breaking down and release calcium into the soil. The smaller you crush the shells the faster the calcium will be released and I use two or three full eggshells in each plant hole. Just make sure before you use them you've washed them thoroughly. Once you've done that just place the plant into the hole and pack the soil around gently. Once you've surrounded the new plant with soil and filled out any gaps, just push down gently and make sure that the plant is standing upright. Again, the soil shouldn't be too light or pushed down too hard. You just need enough pressure to make sure the plant's standing up firmly. Now here they are just over two and a half months. I'm just gonna show you one more little trick in order for this plant not to get early blight or any fungal diseases. Just get a pair of scissors and cut off the lower branches. Now we've had a good couple of months of bad weather, so what will happen is the first two or three branches can sag down and touch the ground. This could then be a breeding ground for a fungus called early blight. The branches can also be used as a walkway for slugs and snails to attack the rest of your plant. Now you want to watch out for these little things here, the camera's having trouble focusing, but these are called suckers. Now if it's a determinate bush variety, you don't really want to remove these. But if it's an indeterminate variety, you want to get rid of these as soon as you see them. These are just going to suck nutrients out of the main plant and reduce your harvest. If you don't cut the sucker off cleanly, it could open the plant up to more diseases. And just for all the haters, I have grown my thumbnail extra long just to do this job. <laughs> and no, they're not dirty, I just hit my thumb with a hammer. <laughs> now depending on variety, these can take up to 50 days to harvest and all the way up to 120 days. So I will end this video here as it is getting a bit long, but I will do some other videos on fertilising and feeding these plants, so check out this playlist. I'll also do another follow up video on how to keep plants healthy, such as the ones in the background. Now if you'd like to keep up to date on all of my future videos, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Here are some other links to some of my great new playlists. And if you've tried these or any other projects, I'd love to see your progress, so please post some photos on my Facebook gardening group. All the links are in the description box below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.